I often get asked to cover more things about the Jag. So I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games. And today I do the review of Jaguar XJ220 for the Sega CD. Second Opinion Games. At the very start of this game, there is classic Sega CD FMV of you flying through some sand dunes just to come to the destination of your brand new Jaguar. Because nothing says really nice sports cars like driving through sand. I mean, they, they practically go hand in hand. This game is one of the best hidden gems of the Sega CD. Kind of like an uncut diamond. It's a little rough around the edges, but if you look past its flaws, you might find something very valuable here. And the game has quite a bit of flaws. For everything it seems to do really good, it also seems to do really wrong. What isn't wrong is the graphic style. It's a super scaler that looks amazing. This is some of the best super scaling I've ever seen on the Sega Genesis. Even if it is the Sega CD, I know it really didn't add that much horsepower, so keep in mind, at its core, this is running off the Genesis's processor. The bright, cheery colors are also pretty darn good in this game. So, how does it handle? Well, the C button accelerates, and really, that's it. I mean, you can switch from manual and automatic transmission, which is a good thing. However, in the manual transmission, you hit up and down. Also, a very good thing to shift your gears because you really don't have to take your finger off the gas pedal. However, it doesn't really help you out in any major way. You think by downshifting you could take corners a little bit better, but even if you slow down, you don't seem to take those corners any better. Also, when the field gets crowded full of cars and you bump into them, you have to shift all the way back down yourself and then recycle through them. And you have to shift really, really fast. I think it's also kind of weird that the Jaguar goes 126 miles per hour in second gear. I can't get my Nissan Versa past 10 miles an hour in second gear, so that's something that really happened in this game. You also have, depending on which you start up, if it's Grand Prix or World Tour, you have 16 tracks in each one, giving you a total of 32 tracks, which is insane. There is so many tracks here, it's crazy. The downside is, most of them look exactly the same. Well, there is a couple of key differences. The background layer overall could be slightly different, or it could be a snowy looking level, or a rainy level depending on where out in the world you are. Switzerland, obviously, with the snow. The rain could be anywhere, maybe Seattle, who knows? And if there's tons of tunnels everywhere, well, chances are you're in Germany because they like to make a lot of tunnels, I guess. The variety is there, but not 16 tracks worth of variety, or let alone 32 tracks worth of variety. In the menus option, you can set for as many or as few laps as you want. Well, three, five, seven, nine. Basically, that's about it. But the whole game seems to be structured around five laps. For example, your gas tends to run out just after the third lap, so you have to make a pit stop. If you set it for three laps, well, you don't have to make that pit stop whatsoever, making that purpose totally useless. But you won't work your way up through the rankings fast enough to be able to get first place, so the game will be over rather quickly. However, if you set it for longer than five, well, then you're going to end up hitting other cars and smashing your cars up, or just not be able to make tight corners good enough because the controls are a little bit wonky, and then you're going to damage your automobile. Oh yeah, there's damage in this game. Not that you actually see while you're driving, but in between races, you have to repair your car. And boy, it is expensive repairing this car. You're basically going to go bankrupt no matter what you do because the tracks are rather narrow and cars just won't get out of your way. So you're going to have a few fender benders here. The game also has a track editor. 
which is great, except I can't figure out anything about it. Nothing. I'm hitting every single button on the controller, and I can't get it to do a darn thing. Sometimes I can lay down a piece that's a bit of a curve, but that's it. I can't change the weather. I can't do anything. Maybe I'm doing everything completely wrong, but honestly, I can't figure it out, no matter how many buttons I press or no matter what I do. So the track header is there, it's just most people aren't going to have the patience or the time to figure it out. Also, there's save states, because thank goodness the Sega CD had internal memory. Well, I also have a memory card too, but everything can be saved on the Sega CD's internal memory. So if you happen to play really, really well working your way through the Grand Prix, well, save after each level. If you don't play so well, hit reset and start the level over again. Eventually, you'll get it down. And maybe something to help you out even more in this game is free practice mode, where you could cycle through every track in the game and see all the corners. Then break out a pen and a piece of paper and write down all the different turns and how sharp they are so you know how to take them. This will dramatically help you. Why it couldn't just show you the track before you race each race, I don't know. So take my advice, do this, and you'll win a lot more races. Also, keep in mind you have to set it for five laps as a minimum in order to work your way up. Otherwise, if you set it for three, you're going to continuously get seventh place, which is really frustrating. Now, Jaguar XJ220 might not be the best hidden gem for the Sega CD. But you know what it is? A great game that's really fun to play. It might be just a single player experience, but the experience is still a really good one. I enjoy the graphical style and the music. CD quality at that. And you know what? Maybe if you chisel away this game, you'll find something better. I just wish they added a brake button, because seriously, there are no brakes, which makes some corners nearly impossible. But I still love the game regardless. And that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. I bet you guys were surprised that I didn't say Jaguar. I said Jaguar because this is a European sports car, and that's how it's pronounced. Unlike the Atari Jaguar, which is made in America, so it has the pronunciation of a stupid American. So if you want to watch more Atari Jaguar videos, well, I have a crap ton of them, as I pretty much reviewed everything for that system, except for a few more games that I yet to cover. So until later, I'll see you again, guys.